Thank you guys very much for coming. I'm going to transition and introduce our next speaker. So David Hahn is the Vice President of Product Management at LinkedIn. So the thing you need to know about David is he has been at LinkedIn for eight and a half years. Uh, among other things, that makes him an ancient in our industry, that makes him a graybeard. He spent an inordinate amount of time thinking deeply about some of the biggest problems in social media. Uh, critically though, I think for our purposes today, David has been one of the chief, and is one of the chief architects of LinkedIn's transition from a professional network to the world's largest professional network to the definitive uh, professional publishing platform. He's gonna come up and talk about that. He'll also pick up on some of the themes that Mike and Jill talked about, uh, social, uh, the role of uh, mobile, and of course, the content marketing ecosystem and what it means to be a content marketer. So please welcome David Hahn. Hello. One of the things that we like to encourage at LinkedIn uh, is what we call pre-meeting intelligence. And what pre-meeting intelligence means is that before you walk into a meeting, you look at the person's LinkedIn profile. That wouldn't work in Jill's case, but uh, for most of the rest of you, hopefully it will work. Uh, and so I spent some time uh, looking at profiles uh, to make sure that when I came up here today, I had more to talk about uh, than the usual sort of, oh, the weather's beautiful, I'm from California, it's still beautiful. Um, and so I uh, did a little bit of research, and I found uh, some, some very interesting people in the crowd that I wanted to, to call out today. Um, and they don't know I'm calling them out, by the way. So, uh, so please help me uh, bring some positive energy. Um, so, so first person uh, in, in the crowd that I wanted to call out. Uh, so Jennifer Lemming. Jennifer, are you here? Jennifer, hello. <laughs> She's just walking back in. Hey, Jennifer. How are you doing? So, so Jennifer is the earliest adopter in the room. And when I've done this exercise before, it's usually like, yep, earliest adopter in the room, but ha ha, I've been at LinkedIn eight and a half years. I was on way before she was. It turns out she was one of the first 10,000 people on LinkedIn. And wow, OK, that's, that's, that's quite a reaction. I wasn't sure if that would get you a drink among this crowd, but you come out to Mountain View, and we will treat you right. That's like huge cred in, in Mountain View. So, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, next is, uh, is most endorsed, uh, Matt. Matt, are you here? Matt, there's Matt. That's sort of like, oh, fantastic, guys. Uh, so this is a Renaissance man uh, endorsed for a broad number of things, everything from digital strategy to search engine optimization. Uh, I think cooking is on there. Uh, my wife also endorsed me for cooking, although she said she was being ironic. So um, uh, I hope in your case it's a little bit more authentic. Uh, and then finally, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany, are you here? No? There you are, sort of shy. Yeah, there you are. Give it up for Tiffany. <laughs> so, so Tiffany is the most connected person in the room. And that says a lot, because this is a pretty connected crew in here. In fact, the first degree connections of everybody in this room sums to 50,000 people. So that means you are all directly connected to 50,000 people. It's not when we try to do our third degree math about three different hops and give you some big number. This is pretty significant, that a room this size with a couple hundred people uh, and the number of connections that you have. And of course, by being on LinkedIn, you're connected to a lot more people than that. These days we have 200 north now of 200 million people on LinkedIn. That means one of every three professionals on Earth is now on LinkedIn, which is a pretty impressive st statistic. But at LinkedIn, we are not only about connections. That's not the end game. The connections are a platform. The connections are an enabler. Our mission is not just to connect the world's professionals. It's to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and more successful. And one of our earliest value propositions uh, to make people more productive and successful was connecting talent and opportunity. It's one of the things for years we were kind of most well known for. And when you think about what we were able to do, because we were able to get so many professionals to come online and identify themselves professionally, and identify their skills, identify their endorsements, all of a sudden we were able to change the way that people hired. Rather than putting up a sign and waiting and hoping that the person with the right skill set would walk by the storefront, we now empowered employers to say, no, these are the kinds of skills that I'm looking for. I want to go after this talent and this talent and this talent in a very proactive way. And that's changed the way that people hire. It's also changed the way that people get jobs. Rather than submitting a resume that goes into a black hole, they can use their professional connections in order to get their dream job. But it's not connecting with talent with opportunity that I want to talk about today. 
There's a new and emerging value proposition on LinkedIn that's growing incredibly. And that is to inform, educate, and inspire professionals. And we are doing that because of a content evolution that's happening on LinkedIn. We are doing that because, as Jonathan said, we are becoming the definitive professional publishing platform. And so today, I want to spend some time uh, on that particular topic. It's also not just, even though this is a relatively recent phenomenon for us at LinkedIn, we're also making quite a bit of progress. When we compare these two value propositions, professional content consumption and job seeking, we see it happen. Professional content consumption is happening about six times more often, six times as much time spent relative to job seeking, the thing that we had been known for, you know, for quite some time. So really powerful on the platform. But it's not just within LinkedIn. Professional content consumption, there's a lot of players out there. And they generate a lot of uniques. You see them sort of topping out in the 74 million uniques a month. These, these are comm score numbers here. Well, LinkedIn is now at 181 monthly, million monthly uniques. And that is largely driven by the shift to content you know, that we are seeing on the platform. So again, this is happening very rapidly. It's happening at tremendous scale. And it's a big change for LinkedIn. And we think it's a great opportunity for you guys. I'm going to spend some time on that today. So I want to talk more about what's behind this, this content evolution on LinkedIn. I want to tell you why I think that's a great opportunity for the folks in the room. And then there's some people that do this really well. So I want to give you some best practices. So I, I want to start with you know, everyone in the room is, is familiar, uh, of course, um, you know, with, you know, with newspapers. You know, we read them every morning. There's one left on my door of the hotel room. It's the New York Times, you know, fantastic newspaper. Um, but what's, what's crazy is for the last 100 years, in fact, I think it's been more than 100 years, essentially the way that the news works, there's a bunch of stories out there. And then an editor and a couple assistant editors get in a room, and they decide what's going to be most important for that day. They have to pick three or four headlines that are more important for all of us. And they have to do that once. They have to do that once for everybody, for everybody that reads a newspaper. They can't pick and choose, oh, well, David might like this kind of thing. Joe might like this kind of thing. They pick a set of headlines once. Well, that's changing. And social is changing that. Your network is changing that. The behavior today is increasingly that your network decides what are the important stories to read. And nowhere is that more true than on LinkedIn. The specific product that I'm showing here is LinkedIn Today. Many of you are probably familiar with it. LinkedIn Today is a custom professional news experience for you. And it is precisely tailored to you. Unlike other social networks where it's just articles that your network is reading, where someone in your network had to view the article and had to share it, we also look at who is doing the sharing. And that's a critical component. Because of the professional data that we have about, uh, about all of you, we can look and say, hey, who are people like David that are sharing a, a specific article? So that we can understand the most relevant news for you across 200 million professionals, whether or not you are connected to them or not. And so the result of this is a very, very custom experience. So if I was to compare sort of my LinkedIn today to Jill's LinkedIn today, they'd be very, very different. You see an article, it's very specific, uh, some, some mobile apps that are um, around productivity, which is very relevant to me working at LinkedIn. Uh, and then you see, you know, frankly, what looks like financial jargon you know, in the second screen. So those are the two, you know, and, and that's perfect for Jill. Uh, or, or at least she said it's perfect for Jill. So those are kind of the two experiences that you see. The second trend that's happening is original content. How many folks in the room uh, are House of Cards fans? Anyone? How many finished the entire series in a week? OK, great. How many of you took a day off of work to finish the series? <laughs> Yeah, me neither, me neither. Uh, so fantastic show. All of you remember the story, though. Netflix 2011. I think it's Quickster, Quickster, Flickster, Quickster. Uh, so they come up with Quickster. They're like, yep, we're going to break up our business. Stock tanks, customers go nuts, and they just have cancellations that are rampant on the service. And everybody writes them off. Everybody says, you know what, Netflix, you know, it's over. And so for the last couple of years, Reed Hastings and their management team, they've been rebuilding. But a core part of their strategy was original content. And when you see all the hands that go up in the room saying, yep, we're House of Cards fans, that's why their Q1 absolutely crushed it. They added 3 million paying subscribers in that quarter alone. 
And that was a record for their entire history as an existence of, of, the, of a business. So original content, extremely powerful. Well, it's been powerful for us, too. We have a program called LinkedIn Influencers. It's been around for a little less than a year. LinkedIn Influencers stems from our observation that we've got 200 million professionals on LinkedIn, and they all have a lot of years of business experience. So how do we take all these experiences, how do we take their advice, and how do we help inform, educate, and inspire professionals based on this collective wisdom? We recognize that the tools that they had at their disposal weren't useful for imparting that kind of wisdom. They either had to do it in the 140 characters that Jill talked about not being enough, or they had to set up their own blog, have their own distribution, have their own show. And for an operating executive, who for many of us in the room, we'd love to get, you know, new, we'd love to get advice from people that are actually in operational roles, that's just a little bit too much to ask. So we launched the LinkedIn Influencers Program. And we started with about 100 influencers. Most of these folks, again, were business operators, executives at companies, and other luminaries in the business field. And we gave them the opportunity to actually originate content on LinkedIn. This wasn't sharing articles that existed anywhere else. This was originating exclusive content only on LinkedIn. And it was fantastic. Because for them, we had built-in distribution with 200 million professionals waiting for this kind of business information, waiting for this kind of business advice. They've gotten just incredible feedback. And for the users, the quality of the content, the quality of the stories, the quality of the advice, it, they just haven't seen it anywhere else before. This is really the first time something like this has happened. So this has been you know, incredibly powerful for us on the LinkedIn platform. I want to click through just a couple to show you guys examples for those that aren't familiar. Uh, so this one's quite popular, Richard Branson. Uh, he's a prolific writer. I think this has gotten more than a million views in, a, in the first couple weeks. Uh, small business community especially just loves this dude. They see him as an entrepreneur, bold. They all want to be like him. And they really just eat this kind of stuff up. Um, we also have you know, folks that are in your industry and, and kind of the financial tips. It's clear that a lot of people are looking for answers you know, in this field. And so there's a lot of popularity um, for you know, essentially these lists of advice uh, of you know, kind of financial, you know, financial news and financial trends. Then there's actually you know, looking at the quality of some of this. Uh, you, know, you have, in this case, something that I would characterize as economist quality, but slightly more accessible. And, you know, and it's this kind of weekly analysis of economic reports that you see another very significant set of the LinkedIn population you know, just really eating up. And so those examples were really on the inform, they're really on the educate side. But leaders are people too. Leaders are supposed to inspire, but leaders also need to be inspired. And that's why this, this post, I'm going to show you guys a video clip here. Diego Rodriguez, a, a partner at IDEO, uh, the heart of leadership. He wrote a post last week and then showed this video that I'm going to show you. It's just incredible. You're going to see a girl who comes up uh, at, at a basketball game, a major event, televised, national television, millions of viewers, and she's doing the national anthem. And a couple seconds in, you're going to see that she chokes. She forgets the words. And watch what the coach does. And watch how quickly the coach reacts. So I'm going to play this video clip now. And now to honor America and salute the men and women serving our country with our national anthem. Please welcome, as voted by you, the fans, our winner of the Toyota Get the Feeling of a Star promotion, Natalie Gilbert.
So that's, that's Mo Cheeks. And within about nine seconds, the guy is probably thinking about the game. Who knows what he's thinking about? All of a sudden sees this happen, knows he's on national television, and in less than 10 seconds, he makes a move. I would like to admit that I'd make that same move, but I'm not so sure. And the dude clearly cannot sing. He at least knew the words, <laughs> which is great. But he jumped right up there, and he took action. And so, you know, again, these are the kinds of things that, that folks are posting, and uh, you know, really, really inspiring. So last trend I want to talk about in content evolution that we're seeing, uh, some of you may have noticed uh, an acquisition we made a couple weeks ago. Uh, we acquired Pulse. A any Pulse readers in the room? Oh, wow. OK. That's more than I thought. That's fantastic. Uh, so Pulse we acquired uh, because it's one of the top news readers out there. So you've heard about our content evolution. Content's obviously important. Uh, we also saw things trending uh, you know, on, the, on the mobile experience in a certain way and said, hey, this is fantastic. This Pulse app, every month, gets 300 million article views. This is a startup. This is a relatively you know, young company, I think slightly over a year old. 300 million article reads per month. The average user spends over 180 minutes on the application every month, 180 minutes. So you see what mobile is doing to content consumption. Mo you know, content consumption is not going anywhere. It's, getting, it's increasing because of mobile. And what's happening, it's these small bursts of time. It's when you're standing in line at Starbucks. It's when you're listening to some dude giving a keynote on LinkedIn, and you're on your phone, you're bored. <laughs> and, and those are the moments where people are spending time. And it really adds up. It adds up significantly. So you know, this, is, this is something we're very excited about. Uh, it's going to be an opportunity for you folks in the audience to participate uh, in the next couple months. Um, and then the other thing that we just released recently on the mobile side is our own app. This is our third release. Uh, so far, we're, we're very thankful. It's gotten rave reviews, four stars in the App Store. And again, a very specific behavior is happening. We see mobile relative to desktop. We're seeing a lot more content consumption happening on the mobile device for the same reasons I just talked about with Pulse. Uh, so again, as we think about our content evolution, mobile is going to be at the very center. And we think it's going to be very good for us. So content marketing opportunity. So all this change to content on LinkedIn, we think is a great opportunity for you folks. And I want to give you a, a couple reasons why I think it's um, specifically going to be quite interesting. So first is that marketing becomes a first class citizen, in my view, for the first time when you're doing content marketing. One of the features that right now I'm most excited about, and we have this in pilot right now, this is BlackRock right here. What you're seeing is a BlackRock update that's sitting in the feed on LinkedIn. It's sitting in the feed right along with all the other organic uh, elements that we have in a user's feed, where they're reading influencer content, where they're reading news. And it sits right there. And BlackRock was able to participate in our sponsored updates program and put that update directly into our feed. And as you might imagine, when you can take an update that's a very high quality, and in this case, BlackRock does a great job of knowing their audience, understanding that their audience is looking for something that's going to make them more productive and successful, and inserting that right next to all this great organic content that people are viewing, you get very high engagement rates. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as I go on. But again, what you're seeing here is an example of our new sponsored updates product that is in the pilot right now, and essentially allows you to take all this great content that many of you already have and get it directly in front of the users that you care about. In this case, they're able to specifically target based on all the professional characteristics that we have in our targeting system to make sure it goes just to the right set of folks. So the second case where you know, content is really acting as a first class citizen is on SlideShare. That was also an acquisition we made uh, a, a, about a year ago. And in this case, Oppenheimer actually has a deck around kind of new portfolio allocation. And it's fantastic. It goes right into SlideShare. It goes right onto LinkedIn. It lives as, as real content. And then to the extent the marketer wants to take it and accelerate it even more, they have an opportunity to use what we call our new SlideShare ad unit, where they can take the organic SlideShare content that they already have today, that's already getting uh, like, commented, all the other social actions that come with it, and they can put it directly in front of the audience that they care about. So this is called the SlideShare ad unit. Uh, and again, it's a great way to kind of extend the organic content that's already coming in on LinkedIn. So the other great reason I love content marketing is the social proof is already included. So you know, this is an ad here. Uh, this is David Beckham. I assume 
Uh, the point of this is uh, you know, drink, drink more smoothies, better at soccer. Uh, I'm sure, sure Bloomberg is a huge fan of this particular ad campaign. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the old way of social proof. The new form of social proof is like, comment, and share. People, especially for the kinds of products and services that we're talking about today, they're less interested in what the celebrity cares about. They're less interested in what the soccer player does with his own money. They're more interested in the people around them. What do my coworkers do? What are professionals that I respect? What do people that I trust? What do people that I trust do with their money? That becomes so much more important. And so in content marketing, whether it's the updates that I showed you or the slideshare presentation that I showed you, all those social actions are already built in. And when, those, and when that content comes in a native environment, we find that even though sites around the web have a LinkedIn share button, uh, we find that things that happen natively on the site, there's so much more social engagement. People are there, they're logged in, that's what they're there to do, they're there, they're there to share. And so you know, we think the social component being built into content marketing you know, is critically important. Last point, your customers have a surprising amount to contribute. So we have a couple examples where some of the best content was actually created from feedback from the customers themselves. And in this case, you have Herb Greenberg. This is a great quote. In the short time posting on LinkedIn, quality of comments is higher than anything I've ever seen in 12 years of online journalism. And it's true. You've got you to gotta see it to believe it. But the comments, the engagement is just incredible. And our advertisers are finding that too. City built a group, Women in Business. Many of you heard about this last year, where we, we've just had phenomenal engagement. We've had posts with over 1,000 comments. And the comments then come back in and loop in as, comment, as content as part of the group. The comments become the content. So as you think about your strategies, as you think about, well, I have to continue coming up with, com with commentary and, and content to attract folks to my group, you can actually get your users and your audience to do that for you. And City, I think, has done a great job of this. American Express, same thing. They just rebooted their entire open forum using LinkedIn as a central part of its identity. And that means, again, all social is built in. It means the, when you think about business advice, you know who you're talking to because it's LinkedIn identity. And everything flows across the, the, the network, the professional network of LinkedIn, uh, as people are giving advice in this engaging forum. So last thing I, I want to talk about, uh, last section, is, is a couple more patterns of success that we've seen to make people successful. So I've talked about our mission. We want to make our members more productive and successful. But the people that are best at content marketing, they have that exact same outlook for their customers. They want to make their customers more productive and successful. And so they think about every piece of content that they push and they, they ask themselves the question, even if this person doesn't become a customer of mine, is this going to have made them better off? And again, BlackRock, this is a different BlackRock example where they're talking about gold. And you can see it in the comments. The people so deeply appreciate the insight they're getting in this case. It's great for the BlackRock brand, but even if they don't convert, they're going to be people that were better off because they read this content. So making your customers successful and really having that user first perspective, and Jill touched on this too, I thought you know, it was such a great point. Next is it's OK for you guys to be the editor. You don't have to originate all your own content. A lot of the people that we see doing quite well, here's City, who they just happen to find a great article. They happen to find a great article on Lean In and Cheryl. And it was also very popular. We're seeing a lot of the folks on the platform that are successful. They know their audience, and they're originating some of their own content. But other times, they're just picking and choosing out there to find the best content for their end group. And you remember my original comments about your network becoming the editor. You, too, can become the editor. So third, you know, make it snackable. And this was a phrase, actually, that we acquired the Pulse team. Uh, these, the, the Pulse team is you know, pretty young dudes. Uh, they use this term, make it snackable, but it's just so right. Because they recognize what mobile usage especially looks like. Because it's these bursty moments, it's these two or three minutes, you've got to make sure that someone can consume your content. If you're putting a white paper up that's 10 pages long, no one's going to consume it while they're in line at Starbucks. They're not going to do it. But you can take that same content, and you can make it something that's quick, easy to consume, and interesting. So folks that make it snackable, keep it short, keep it light. And, and the other key thing here is that 
keep in mind that you, one of your objectives is to get people to share the content. So not only do you want to make sure they can digest it quickly, but you want to make sure that they want to share it. The key thing that's driving sharing on a, on a site like LinkedIn is people thinking about their own professional identity. They're sharing because they want to look smart. So the extent to which you can make it easily digestible and make it quick for them to say, oh yeah, I've totally read this article on gold. I'm totally smart about currency markets. That kind of thing you know, is, is what drives social. And social is good for you, but it becomes great for that end user's professional identity too. So last tip here from people that I think are, are doing this quite well. So it's really value the who. There's a lot of folks out there, I think, that get really caught up in, you know, in, in how many clicks did I get, how many social actions, and they're looking at these big aggregate numbers. If the wrong people are clicking and the, long people are, are, and the wrong people are liking, this is not doing you any good whatsoever. And so one of the things that we really encourage folks to pay attention to is really get into the demographic data. Understand, if you're trying to push content onto finance people and they're not the, the biggest uh, bar on this chart, then you're not targeting correctly. Or your message is not resonating with the audience that you're trying to target. So really thinking about the who you know, is, is critically important. So last thing that I want to leave you guys with, uh, I, I want to talk about Sally for just a second. So Sally has been one of the early folks on the LinkedIn influencer platform. She's been a prol pro prolific writer. And, uh, and she's written across a range of subjects. One day she's giving you know, great financial tips. Another day she's giving you know, uh, 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 advice on, on career advice that just resounds incredibly. It's some of the most popular career advice posts that we've seen on the network. And then sometimes she's talking about the macro economy. So really some range in the kind of posts that she's talking about. But what's so interesting about Sally is that Sally's following on LinkedIn is 20 to 30 times as large as some of our other influencers that have a major traditional media channel outlet. So when we compare her, who she was an operator at some pretty big companies, and you know, she's been on you know, uh, uh, you know, a news show once or twice before, but when we compare her to people that have a built-in audience because of a major cable network, her following is 20 to 30 times as large. And the important point of this story is that our content evolution is happening so quickly, and there's so much green field that it's going to create some new winners. And some of those new winners are going to be influencers, but some of those new winners are also going to be companies and brands. And so I really think it's a great time for all of you to be digging into the LinkedIn platform, spending some time getting good at content marketing, uh, because there's just a lot of greenfield out there. Thank you very much.